Hi guys, my name is Alexei and I'm doing this quick tutorial uh, primarily to help out my fellow colleagues at the Langara CA with our final projects. And But I also want to keep it over here so I can have this for reference in the future. And it's basically just going to break down how I found a workaround to use Redshift and, uh, and its shadow catcher material to create holdout mats for compositing purposes hope it helps so yeah let's get into it uh, I'm gonna try to get this scene which I also think it's already in 3d I'm gonna try to put a just a sphere make it look something like this so as you can see like there's a shadow over here and it's creating a reflection so how I got to that I'm gonna break up this tutorial into two parts one in Maya and one inside Nook because there are two different parts of this and both of them are equally important so for the Maya part uh, this is gonna be a little bit of an advanced tutorial so I'm gonna assume that you guys know what I'm doing for the most part but I'm gonna try to do my best to explain uh, in smaller increments what I did here is I basically try to recreate the scene that's behind the picture right by making a small makeshift planes here so that the light will have uh, places to bounce from I can show you this by uh, turning off the x-ray here so you can see the geometry and there's a, the sphere is over there so the sphere that I'm gonna try to put inside the scene and I can move it around right and right now this light over here is supposed to make this light that's coming through the window uh, in reality it shouldn't be there it should be outside this wall here coming inside but that's gonna create some other issues that I don't want to get into right now so right now I'm just gonna kind of fake the direction of the light over here and I'm just using a spotlight mostly because the spotlight I think creates uh, softer shadows that are easier to control but you can use uh, area lights or whatever lights you need right so right now if I IPR the scene what we're gonna get is this right it's very much not what you want and if you take a look at the alpha it's completely horrible right so first thing we want to do is create a dome light and what this is gonna do right now is I'm just so I'm just gonna click on the create dome light and if you take a look at the IPR now you can see that it's already giving more information to the sphere and the, the other geometry but the alpha looks horrible so the first thing we want to do is go inside the dome light give it a dome map uh, you can find whatever dome lights you want but it's best if you find something that matches at least a little bit what your environment looks like for this example you're gonna see that I'm not gonna use an HDRI that exactly matches the, the environment but it, it, it is an indoor light so I think that kind of replicates kind of what I'm going for so I'm just gonna put in uh, my HDRI and now if I turn off the if I just hide my geometry here you can see what it's gonna look like see like it doesn't look like anything at all like with the background I have in the back but it is an indoor light so I think it it can work for what I'm doing so in order for the the materials to actually get the information of the shadows and the reflections we have to give it a specific material that's called the redshift shadow catcher the way we do it is we go to the hypershade and under the redshift here if you just type in shadow you have this shadow catcher here I'm gonna create two of them and I'm gonna explain why so right now I'm just gonna grab all of my geometries and I'm gonna give them I'm gonna assign existing material the shadow shadow one okay if we go to the if we go to the material here this shadow catcher you're gonna see that it has a lot of uh, different parameters but what it, what's interesting now is that if we're, if I IPR now you're gonna see that it they don't show up at all but if I check the alpha you're gonna see that it is catching something 
see like it's it's present so back to the parameters if you check the parameters of the the catch shallows it's already catching shadows but it's not catching diffuse and it's not catching reflections so for for right now it's okay because for most of these things at least it's okay because you don't want them to catch reflections and it doesn't necessarily need to catch the fuse for our purposes so right now i'm going to leave it the way it is but if you check the picture you can see that the the floor is quite reflective so that's why i created a second shadow catcher because this this specific one i'm going to assign the other one shadow 2 and on this one the shadow 2 I'm gonna catch reflections. So now if I IPR, we're still not seeing, but we're gonna get there. But if you see now the alpha, it's, you can see that it's kind of reflecting those lights, right? Going back to the dome lights now. If we go to the lone lights, you remember I set it to uh, an indoor lighting, right? But it's still not when I when I render it out I still can't see what I wanted to see right so what we can do here is go to backplates and now I'm gonna assign the same exact picture that I have on my background right so now if I IPR you can see there in the holes that the background is now the the background that I have on the picture but it's not showing up in the rest of the frame yet because I have to do an, another setting which is I have to go to the shadow catcher over here right on base under base there's this background is environment so I'm gonna click on that and then I'm gonna go to my second shadow catcher and I'm gonna do the same thing so now if I IPR you can see that I can see the whole frame, right? And with this, I can kind of now play around a little bit. For example, if I move the, the sphere closer to the ground and in that direction, and I take a look at the IPR, you can see like now it's generating a shadow. And it should also be generating uh, a reflection. Let's take a look. Yeah, see, like it's it's generating like a shadow over here. It's not going over the the couch because I don't have a geometry for the couch. But the information is all there now, right? So the next thing I want to do is turn off the shadows for the dome lights. The way we do that is we come to here in shadows and unclick this, and now it's gonna be like a much better image rounded out. And if I check the alpha, it's exactly the alpha that I want. And the only thing that is not exactly what I want right now is those two squares over here. And they're only there right now because we have the the IPR set up in a way that we can see the whole frame. But when we actually render it out, what we're going to do is turn off the environment of the, of the dome light like this. Like we come back here on the environment and we just turn this off. And it's going to be like this. So now if we check the alpha, it's exactly what we want. So the geometry is full white and there we and we have like a different opacity for the shadow. The reflections right now, you can see that the, the alpha is not full white. And that's because if we go here to the the shadow catcher, second one, if we go to reflections, the weight is like six sixty percent. If we increase that to one, you can see that now it goes to full white. So now it's the same amount. And this is better because if you do it as, at 60%, you can't uh, increase afterwards if you needed to, but you can always bring it down in Nook if you wanted to afterwards. So I think it's better to just leave it at one. Next important thing to do is on your render settings, first of all, be sure that the resolution is the same as, the, as your background when you're rendering out, right? And under AOVs, it's important that you have uh, a shadow pass over here so in the shadows here if you just click add and 
for this specific tutorial if you also bring in a crypto mat i think it's better just because on the second part on nuke i'll show you guys if you use the crypto mat it's actually more helpful and then all you have to do is render it out normally the way you would for an animated render you'd have to go to rendering and then just batch render right and then after you have all the 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 exrs you bring it to the second part in Nuke. And again, important thing is when you actually render it out, be sure that you get all your settings right on the IPR and it's, everything is functioning correctly. And turn off the environment on the, under the dome light. You don't want to render out your full image looking like this. This is excellent so you can see how the light is working if everything is in position, but you do not want it to actually render out like this. After you do all those things, you can just bring all that, those EXRs inside Nook and I'll show you guys on the second part. Okay, so inside Nook now, uh, I have three things over here. I have the background, the original background that I was using for to take the render. I have the actual render and as you can see, it has the, those alphas that we were talking about. And I have a CryptoMat. If you don't have CryptoMat, I encourage you to go look for it on the internet, download it, because it actually helps you a lot. Because if you don't know CryptoMat, what it does is it creates these shapes, right? And then we can just select what we want from it, and it's going to create alphas for us, and it's interactive. So if you have a full animation, it's going to create an alpha for your whole animation just based on the selection. So if you have like multiple objects, you can create alphas for them super fast. For this tutorial, I'm going to use it a little bit just to show how fast it can be used to do certain. So right now, if I have the background and the render, and I just merge them one on top of the other, right, we're going to have this, which kind of looks what we want, but not exactly, right? For example, I think that the shadows over here, they're too hard on the edges and they are not as strong as they should be the reflection is way too opaque right so how can we put those things together in a better way so if i come back here to my crypto mat first thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna isolate just that sphere right the, the main object and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna copy this alpha because right now what it did is created an alpha for that that ball right and I'm gonna copy it over here and pre-mode it on top. So basically what I'm doing now is I'm getting this image over here and I'm leaving out only the sphere, not the shadow, not the reflection, and I'm putting it on top. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna create another crypto mat. And on this one, I'm gonna isolate just the shadow so right now what it's doing it, it's getting the the reflection as well so we the way we can uh, solve this right now is by by masking it but if I had set the settings before in Maya I could have created uh, crypto mat in a way that it would have divided it into different pieces but for this specific tutorial right now I'm just gonna mask it out and the way I'm gonna do it is we're gonna create a, a rotor shape around the shadow and to, to be honest uh, for this specific tutorial like I could have just masked it I didn't need to use a crypto mat but I'm just using it in a way so to show you guys uh, if you had the, an animation how I would approach it but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna merge this with a mask operation so now I have only the shadows right well Actually, let me go back real quick. What I want to do is isolate just the reflection for now. So I'm going to mask the reflection. I'm going to get the shadows in a bit. So now I have the, the reflection, right? And now I'm going to copy this alpha into the plate again just do this in a more organized way kind of ish so 
Yeah, I'm going to pre-mold this. And now I have only the reflection, right? And now I can merge this, merge this on top, right? And now we look at the image and it's there, right? But now what I'm going to do is you have a couple of things that you could do. But for now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into this merge over here and just reduce the mix and see how now it starts to get transparent and that's closer to the look that you want you can always use the things in your actual background to take it as a cue as to how transparent it should be so that's what I'm trying to do here see like I think this is maybe a, yeah around there I think it should be fine because it's like kind of the same transparency as you see the glass it actually should be a little bit more opaque, I think, because it's closer to the camera than the, the actual painting on the back there. Now for the shadows, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another cryptomat. Just going to hide this real quick. Not advisable to do this in most times, but just for now, just to make this a little bit more visually understandable. I'm going to do this right now. So I'm going to isolate the shadow. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to mask it out for now. I'm going to do just a merge mask. And now I have only the shadow. What I'm going to try to do here is basically use this alpha that I have over here to create a shadow on the background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a grade node and I'm going to put it on the background right if we see the whole image now I'm gonna use this little pulley thing here and use this mask over here right what it's gonna do now is if I pull down the multiply you can see like it's starting to create a shadow there right and the only thing is is that right now this alpha might be a little too weak right now see like everything is like super great and I want it to be a little bit more white there's a couple of ways you could do this right now what I'm gonna just gonna do is I'm gonna create a grade and I'm gonna change this to alpha and I'm just going to look at the alpha right now and I'm gonna multiply a little bit and see how it it starts to get this a little bit more white and the consequence of that is that when we look at over here see how now it's way darker right and we can now we can control a little bit better like how dark do you want it to be right i think around there it should be kind of fine and another thing that we can do is add a blur on top of this alpha over here if i increase the size of the blur now see how it starts to create the softness into the shadow with that you can kind of control like how it's gonna go right and with all these things connected you can control how your reflection is going to look like how your shadow is going to look like and that's the way that i found to work with redshift and the cut the shadow catcher and i hope it helps you guys composite it too uh, just one quick tip over here just because i see for example that this uh, the shadow over here is going over the couch um, i had some questions earlier in the week of how how to take out things from the scene so if you want to like roto out something like you have a CG asset and there's something that should be in front of it, how would you take it out? So just very basically, I'm going to create a shape uh, around the couch, right? It's like very roughly, but just to give you guys an idea, what you can do now is like, this is the shadow, right? This, this place over here is the shadow. So I can get this shape that I just created and I just can, I can just merge. And right now you see that it's going like that, right? Because what it's doing now, it's getting this alpha that I had here. And it's right now doing this over. So when I'm grading it down, this full white is giving it uh, information to make it go make the, the couch darker. And that's not what I want, right? I want to take away this little piece from the, the shadow. So I'm going to change this to a stencil operation. And see, now the, the shadow is gone. And you can even give it like a little bit more blur just to give it like a little bit more fall off see how that those edges there it, it's it's small differences but it makes a difference right and that's the whole thing about compositing it's the little things that make it look better i hope it helps